Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. Okay, now, I can be proven wrong, but, and I've talked about this with a few people a bit now, I think Wilhelm II is, nobody talks about him in, in his negligent, at best, careless attitude towards tensions prior to World War I, and I think that contributed a lot to, to the start of World War I. It's, the start of World War I is notoriously difficult to kind of really pin down what's, who's the main culprit, if anyone, but I think um, Wilhelm, uh, Wilhelm II uh, played a big part, but let's see. So I, I don't think Hitler liked Wilhelm very much at all, because I think he blames him for the loss in World War I. It's the big theme of Hitler. It's all of his anger seems to trace back to World War I. So let's learn. My name's Connor. If you like to learn, Nalegia. Uh, let's do it. If you're not ready to learn, there's the door. Do I have something in my teeth? I'm sorry if I do. Before the devastating era of the Second World War, before the atrocities of the German state during such time, and before the man at the center of it all, there was an emperor and king who never could have predicted what was to befall his precious homeland. German Emperor Wilhelm II, additionally the King of Prussia, Hitler would be the final though. monarch of his kind to rule the German nation. His reign began in the summer of 1888 as he took both thrones in what he assumed was simply another typical secession. But this would not be the case. Instead, Wilhelm was a peculiar monarch. While he contributed greatly to the building of the German navy and undoubtedly helped to strengthen the contemporary German state, the emperor and king was not always well liked by people in and outside of his empire. His questionable foreign policy maneuvers were even bad enough to often be blamed for stirring up enough tension to eventually contribute to the outbreak of the Great War. This, I... whether fair or not, would domino into the ultimate demise of Wilhelm himself. After Germany's defeat and internal collapse following the conclusion of World War I, Emperor of Germany and King of Prussia Wilhelm II was forced to abdicate his power in full on November 9th, 1918. Went off to the this Netherlands. alone left the Emperor bitter and resentful as he fled his home and country for exile in the Netherlands, swearing to never return unless and until Germany would yet again become a monarchy. Germany was now a republic, the Weimar Republic, and Wilhelm was having none of it. And apparently, soon, neither would none other than Adolf Hitler. When Hitler in captures stark Paris, contrast I... in nearly every other way to Wilhelm, Hitler was not a supporter of the former monarchy, and quite frankly found the deposed emperor to be a disastrous failure of a leader. Still, the up-and-coming political juggernaut wasn't satisfied with the Weimar Republic either. He and his party had first attempted a disappointing rebellion in 1923, which fell flat on its face. But by 1932, the economic instability and overall chaos of the Weimar Republic pushed people to back the previously unpopular Adolf. In a stunning change of tide, the Nationalist Socialist Party through. catapulted to I the gotta, top. I gotta say what I'm smirking at. Um, what I'm smirking at is that, so they, they don't like each other very much, these two guys, Adolf and, and Wilhelm, and when Hitler and the Nazis in Germany conquers, uh, France, but, you know, takes Paris, I, I, I'm pretty sure Wilhelm, like, kind of like, puppy dogs his way back into Hitler, and I, I'm not sure if Hitler, uh, acknowledges him or whatnot, maybe he'll go into it becoming the largest political party in the German parliament. Seizing this opportunity, Hitler rose to power in 1933, becoming the Chancellor of Germany that January. This was the point of no return, and the start of the dark era to come. As Hitler swiftly invoked Article 48 and passed the Enabling Act in an ingenious yet tyrannical attempt to bolster his own power and authority, Wilhelm remained abroad in his Netherlands home. But 
While no longer living in Germany, the former monarch was far from disconnected from the German political realm. Now, at this point, it's important to keep in mind that Wilhelm himself was beyond disliked. By many, he was hated. Some viewed him as the incarnation of evil, and countless allies and Axis alike blamed him for much of the Great War. The British people, for example... Let me know if you guys disagree, but I think that is from the little I have learned. I really feel like I have something stuck in my teeth and I'm looking like an idiot, but I'll check it out for the video. Um, is I, I think there's a lot of merit to that, that he had a big... I'm not saying that if it were not for Wilhelm, World War I wouldn't have started. I'm not saying that. I just think he was not neutral. Like, he, he was clearly... So badly wanted to see the once powerful monarch executed for all that had happened, in their opinions, due to him alone, that his own relative, King George V of the United Kingdom, refused to speak out in his defense. While some other world leaders did defend the humiliated German, there was no denying just how hated Wilhelm was. Sir the Nicholas former Dopp emperor, Doppelganger. on the other hand, was also bitter and angry about the recent events of the world, and he was more in infuriated by the fact that all fingers seemed pointed unjustly at him, and this injustice, as he saw it, had gone so far as to rob him of his titles and power. He had to watch his monarchy implode and be replaced by a shaky republic that he had no sympathy for. And then, as he eyed Germany's political situation continuously and intently, hoping and praying that soon he would have a moment to pounce and reclaim his throne and state, he instead had to watch as one man took his homeland on a gloomy, dismal path. Possibly the first point at which Wilhelm developed a strong opinion about Adolf Hitler was during the failed 1923 revolt. While the efforts were quickly stamped out, Wilhelm was gravely suspicious of what the motive had been. Potentially unaware that quite the opposite was true, the deposed monarch thought that it was the Bavarian House of Wittelsbach who was behind it all. His theory was that they were in fact aiming to rebuild the monarchy, but with the House of Wittelsbach in place of his own. But this was never the case. Nonetheless, the acts of the future chancellor were condemned by the former monarch. That's so cool how there's still identity among the different kind of former German states and how they're still, you know, the past, you know, German states being somewhat, you know, autonomous isn't that far back in the, in the past. And that's really cool. From the very start. Still, Wilhelm made the mistake of thinking that, in any context, Hitler meant to restore the monarchy. In reality, the nationalist socialist leader had no intentions of doing such a thing, but he sure went far to pretend that he did. In January of 1931, hoping to rally the support of monarchists, the soon-to-be chancellor sent the World War I veteran Hermann Goering to meet with Wilhelm at his home in the Netherlands. The meeting was short and tense, and it only seemed to deepen Wilhelm's mistrust in the new German party. However, Goering did return the following year, at which point he stayed for an entire week with the former monarch, and many within the party believed that they may have won him over. Quite contrarily, though, Wilhelm hadn't budged. Sorry, question, uh, ADD. Uh, any Germans who know what, what are the two dots above the O um, mean? He regularly warned his family to stay away from this party, and his view of them and their leader remains negative. It wasn't just because they were against the monarchy either, as Goering had even dishonestly told Wilhelm that he and his party in fact did want to restore it. Adversely, it was much of the party's foundation and policies that Wilhelm disapproved of. For one thing, as much as he tried to understand the concept of National Socialism, he just couldn't swallow it. In his own words, this socialism is irreconcilable with the idea of the National. Additionally, although Wilhelm had been accused of at a minimum making anti-Semitic remarks, he was far from the raging maniac that Hitler was. Upon seeing the Third Reich's treatment of Jews, the exiled ruler was appalled and disgusted. In fact, he was so repulsed that he said, for the first time, I am ashamed to be a German. Who? Wait, which His one? ruler was appalled and disgusted.
Seeing the Third Reich's tree, he was far from the raging maniac that Hitler was. Upon seeing the Third Reich's treatment of Jews, the exiled ruler was appalled and disgusted. In fact, he was so repulsed that he said, for the first time, I am ashamed to be a German. Okay. Nonetheless, there were moments when Wilhelm attempted to give praise to the Chancellor, although maybe Paris? a bit backhandedly at times. In between the former monarch's attempts to fully cut any potential ties between himself and the Nazi regime, he gave honest praise to the good that the Third Reich accomplished within its own borders, and he even sent a message to Hitler himself after the successful defeat of the French. But the letter was only partially complimentary. Although oh, really? he gave congratulations, Wilhelm also made sure to refer to the troops who had fought for the Fuhrer as his own. Which predictably annoyed Hitler, who labeled the old royal as an idiot. This was likely the last contact between the two men, as Wilhelm buddied up to the guards who by now were stationed around his Netherland home due to the German occupation. Question, I, I wonder, and I feel like I might have the answer, but maybe you guys can tell me it's wrong. Why, why didn't Hitler just like have him act like he's he he's a threat to try and come in and take over rule of Germany and he's saying all this bad stuff. Is he afraid about the backlash he would get from Germans if if he was seen to have been involved in the killing of a former Kaiser, I, I suppose, is the reason. Hitler was busy with the war and had maintained not an ounce of compassion for the ousted monarch nor his supporters. Nevertheless, the Chancellor was far from stupid and heavy-handed with manipulation. Hence, when Wilhelm inevitably passed away on June 1941, German authorities saw this as a wonderful gift. Not only was their longtime rival and critic gone, but this was the perfect opportunity for a theatrical propaganda event. The plan was clear. Host an extravagant state funeral service in Berlin for the once beloved and final emperor of the German Did Empire. Did anyone suspect it, it was, was to play the part of the heartbroken successor, and an end to the era of the monarchy could finally be seen. The idea seemed easy enough to enact, until, that is, the final will of Wilhelm II was addressed. Predicting the conniving schemes of the Fuhrer, Wilhelm strictly forbade any such funeral for himself and directly stated that he was to be buried right where he died, on his own estate in the Netherlands. Damn, he knew before that his death could be seen. I'm gaining a little respect for him now, actually. See, I gotta hold my tongue. I'm not saying that this has any influence on my thoughts, that he had a lot to do with raising tensions faster than they needed to, be, needed to be raised prior to World War I, but he knew that his death could be seen as a, you know, his corpse, in a way, could be used as a tool by Hitler to get what Hitler wants. And so that, that, that's, five head, that's genius. Thus, the opinion of the Emperor of Germany and King of Prussia, Wilhelm II, concerning the dictator that would follow was a combination of disgust, resentment, and overall disapproval. It also can be said that the feeling was very strongly mutual. Two men at odds over the fate of one state, destined to live and die in opposition. Only the words of Wilhelm himself could sum up his disdain for the Chancellor even more clear. There is a man alone, without family, without children, without God. So true. He builds legions, but he doesn't build a nation. A nation is created by families, a religion, tradition. It is made up out of the hearts of mothers, the wisdom of fathers, the joy and the exuberance of children. Germany under Hitler is an all-swallowing state, disdainful of human dignities, and the ancient structure of our race sets itself up in place of everything else. The man who, alone, incorporates in himself this whole state has neither a god to honor, nor a dynasty to conserve, nor a past to consult. This man could bring home victories to our people each year without bringing them glory. 
but of our Germany, which was a nation of poets and musicians and artists and soldiers, he has made a nation of hysterics and hermits, engulfed in a mob and led by a thousand liars or fanatics. Damn. So well said, and I agree with a lot of it. I think a lot of it was kind of nonsense, just... But you got to feel it, like... You know, it's built by family, yeah, and fathers, I get it, but especially the last thing. Nor a dynasty to conserve, nor a... It's like, and, and, I, and I think about that, Hitler, I always kind of knew it, and it's like, it's so right, like, there was, there was like, Ava Braun and, and stuff like that, but didn't have a wife, didn't have kids, it, it didn't have any family that were, like, in the spotlight with him, it was just him. This guy that just kind of came out of nowhere, failed, failed art school. Man, if they would have just accepted him in art school, we could have avoided a lot, huh? Hmm. Great video. Past to consult. This man could bring home victories to our people each year without bringing them glory. But of our Germany, which was a nation of poets and musicians and artists and soldiers, he has made a nation of hysterics and hermits, engulfed in a mob and led by a thousand liars or fanatics. Well said. That was an amazing video. Love Nalegia. Um, honestly, I feel like I, I got everything out that, that I needed to get out there. Um, my opinion of Wilhelm has changed. In Wilhelm II as a person, has changed, but my opinion still stands that I, I think it's hard to point at anyone or any one nation as the cause of the uh, World, World War One. But that's why it's so fun to talk about and think about without any, you know, sh assuredness. Like World War One would not have happened if not for Wilhelm's boisterous, you know. But uh, that still stands. But interesting. I learned a lot. Great video. I've been kind of hiding my upper teeth this whole time because I think I got to go floss or something. See you guys next.